So uh, how we are going to do this today, um, we have the chat available. Um, so anyone who would like to put in a question or clarification during the presentation may do so. But at the end, we are going to answer all of your uh, questions after the presentation is over. Um, we will use the, or you can use the raise hand feature if you'd like to verbally ask a question during the Q&A period. Um, and uh, just a reminder that this presentation is being recorded, as you just heard, and we will be posting the recording and the slides after the webinar. So to jump right in, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, why we're doing this, this program. Um, as many of you on this webinar know, uh, many of our communities have a long history of local planning efforts uh, throughout various activity centers or urban centers in their communities. Dr. Cog has been lucky enough to support a number of these um, efforts through funding opportunities and partnerships. You may be familiar with our transportation improvement program set-asides, or you are familiar with the uh, technical assistance panels um, with ULI Colorado or the Sustainable Communities Initiative. Um, but even if you're not, this is just another opportunity that we are putting together to further support these efforts. And the focus of this pilot um, will be re-examining past plans or studies. And how we're going to do that is, um, you know, we're going to focus on, you know, projects that want to look for or reanalyze um, barriers or um, how their plan is um, performing, or if it's getting in the way of community goals, if the original efforts are being advanced, um, if anything has changed since the original effort that needs to be re-examined, or you know, projects that are really looking to get started or restarted with implementation. And how we're gonna do that is we are going to, we, Dr. Cog, are going to connect um, local governments uh, who apply to the program with consultants who will provide the technical assistance. The two main things that you have to keep in mind is that the projects need to have a transportation and land use connection, and they need to consider a sub area of your jurisdiction, so not the, the entire thing. Uh, so a comp plan that you maybe want to reassess that's looking at your whole community might not be the best fit for the program. So I'm going to turn it over to Dylan, and who's going to get into the nitty gritty of the program application. Thanks, Emily. So plan reassessments can provide local governments a chance to evaluate tasks, projects, policies, or outcomes that are outstanding from the original planning process, and they can help lead towards implementation through this reassessment. Additionally, it can provide <clears throat> communities the opportunity to evaluate goals of the original plan to make sure that they're reflective of current planning goals uh, for your community or that they're not a barrier to current community planning goals. So plenary assessments further provide an opportunity to uh, leverage new or updated data or analytical methodologies to ground truth prior planning efforts or update models to ensure that the data is reflective of current trends and conditions. Further plan reassessments can provide local governments the chance to address any criteria that was not included or may have been overlooked in the original planning efforts. So successful or selected projects to this program uh, that are plan reassessment projects should also include um, recommended actions for achieving the goals or pathway to implementation. Um, some examples for pathways to implementation could include estimating relative costs or uh, identifying project readiness and obstacles that could be in the way for the reassessment um, or identifying sources of funding for project implementation. So who's eligible? All Dr. Cog member governments may apply. Um, projects must be completed by June 30th, 2023. This is a requirement um, from our fiscal policy. Um, and then projects must demonstrate a project, uh, transportation land use connection, as Emily mentioned. Um, these, so these projects cannot be involving of engineering or any sort of large scale um, capital project, uh, and they cannot be new plans. We are focused on reassessment at this stage. So 
in prior marketing of the language of this program, uh, language mentioned that we had 100,000 available for funding. This was recently changed just before this webinar. So we actually have 150,000 available for project for total funding uh, for this program this year. Um, projects need to be under $50,000. This is our requirement from our fiscal policy. So um, the most expensive it can be is $49,999. Um, and then the funding must be exhausted by June 30th, 2023. Uh, also, no match or contribution will be accepted for this round. So these are some of the, um, when reviewing applications, these are some of the priorities for consideration that Dr. Cogstaff are kind of looking for when, at the application stage. So we'll be examining the extent to which the reassessment will solve the problem outline and the problem statement portion of the application. Um, and we'll also be looking to make sure that the scope of the project is right-sized and ready. So making sure that, um, that the application demonstrates a clear understanding of the needs of the consultant and that the timeline seems appropriate for the scale of the project. Additionally, we'll be looking at um, encouraging projects that are within or nearby Dr. Cog defined areas, such as short trip opportunity zones, urban centers, or rapid transit stations. Uh, and then additionally, extra consideration will be given to projects that identify opportunities for improved access to traditionally underserved populations. So now we'll kind of go through the application and bid process. So I'll start here real quickly and then hand it over to Amy. So we'll go over project roles. So um, local governments submit plan policy reassessment projects to Dr. Clog and the selected applicants will be the recipients of technical assistance for a plan reassessment project. Um, Dr. Cog will be reviewing and scoring applications to the technical assistance program. Dr. Cog will handle the procurement, invoicing, and bidding process on behalf of the local government, and will also be ensuring that the scope and project budget are on track. So consultants will be providing the technical assistance on the plan reassessment project itself, and the consultants will be submitting invoices to Dr. Cog for processing and ensuring that the project tasks and deliverables are in alignment with the scope outlined during the bid process. So kind of a look ahead here, uh, some key dates in May, the call for projects actually opens today. So uh, after this webinar, you're, you're welcome to go ahead and start submitting projects. The call for projects closes on June 22nd. Uh, and then shortly thereafter, Dr. Cog will begin evaluating the applications. And then notif award statuses will be made available on July 11th. Uh, and then shortly thereafter, the bid process will begin. And then once the bid process begins, consultants will have three weeks to respond. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to Emily, who will go through uh, selection and bid process. Okay, so this might get a little complicated, so just bear with me here as we go through this step by step. So, before we actually start any sort of bid process, we are going to obviously have to select the applications. Uh, so how we are going to do that is we will score and rank the applications based on that total overall score. That will give us a list of the applications, and then we will take the top three, and we will notify them that um, these are the three projects that will um, go through the bid process with Dr. Cog. All of the other applicants um, will, will be notified that um, they are not immediately uh, selected to start going through the bid process. But if after the, those three bid processes go through, we still have some funding left, then um, we can notify the next ranked applicant. So during the bid process, Dr. Cog will um, provide the three selected applicants with um, bid information, right? How it's going to work, how the, what the process looks like. Um, we will provide um, information on the consultants who have expressed interest in participating. And the selected applicants, um, with some help from Dr. Cog, will uh, choose five uh, consultants um, to uh, solicit a bid from. Now, we, we chose five because we do have a three bid minimum. So we wanted to make sure that we hit that, that minimum there. And uh, as Dylan mentioned, consultants will have three weeks to respond. Um, you do not have to respond to a request, uh, but you will, if you do, you will respond with a scope of work, 
um, some information on your team, a uh, timeline and cost. Once all of those are in, Dr. Cog and the selected applicants will, re will review the bids and um, choose a preferred bid. Then Dr. Cog and the consultant will enter into a contract. Um, remember, we have until June 30th uh, to spend the funding. Um, it's important to note that, yes, the local government is not in this contract. It is between Dr. Cog and the consultant. All three will attend a project kickoff. And if more funding is available, as I mentioned earlier, we will let the next ranked applicant know, and then we will go through and rinse and repeat until all funding is exhausted. So we ran through that pretty quickly, um, and we are almost at the end um, where you will be able to ask questions, but the ap application um, actually might not quite be live yet. Um, we are gonna send it out to everyone who registered for the webinar uh, after um, we conclude today, um, but it will be at these two links. Um, I know you can't click them, uh, but we are also posting the slides on the event calendar, as well as the recording of this presentation. So you'll be able to um, access the slides that way. Um, after May 23rd, uh, it will be on the Dr. Cog um, requests um, and uh, calls for requests for proposals and calls for projects page. If you go to drcog.org and go under about Dr. Cog, you'll find that there. If you are looking for the event calendar, you can go to um, news and events and the event calendar is, is under that. Um, so with that said, here is our um, contact information. Um, we'll take questions, just ask that they're, they're high level questions. If you have a specific project in mind that you're thinking about and you wanna discuss that with Dylan and I, we're happy to do so. Um, just shoot us an email or, or give us a call and we can um, talk more in depth about that. Um, so I see a couple questions in the chat that I will answer first. Um, how do consultants show that they are interested? So uh, the way we kind of assembled the consultants is that we went through various sources, APA Colorado consultants that had you know, worked on a, um, maybe on a Dr. Cog plan before, or just, you know, honestly through Google. Um, once we compiled that list, uh, we then reached out to all of the consultants individually. Um, and then those who responded back with, with interest um, were kind of on our preliminary list, uh, right? And um, after this webinar and maybe a week or so, I'm going to reach out to all of the consultants that have previously expressed interest, those who attended the webinar um, or we've been in contact with and just confirm that they are still um, interested in being involved with the program. The next question is, if the contract is between the consultant and Dr. Cog, what level of involvement will the local agencies have throughout the project? That's a great question. Um, the local agencies are really going to be involved with the actual direct technical assistance. The role of Dr. Cog, aside from you know, processing invoices, is just making sure that um, you know, the scope is being followed and that we're not getting any scope creep, that the timeline makes sense, um, um, those, those types of things. You know, we're not going to be involved with actually. Like, you know, we're not going to be involved. That's going to be like doing the local agency work. and that's going to be consulting. So you'll have more control over the, and the content of it. So you'll have more control over the, the focus content of it while Dr. Power is focused more on the higher level program stuff. Let's see. Does the restriction on engineering also include high level concept design for cost estimating as part of implementation planning? That is a very good question. We can get some clarity. Okay. Um, we've had similar questions like that uh, pertaining to our uh, set aside funding and we'll just get some confirmation that it'd be similar. Um, as long as it's not really detailed design, it, it is uh, helpful to get towards implementation by at least getting to something that can have a rough cost estimate. So I think we understand that question. We've had it before, so we'll get some clarity.
Does a corridor qualify as a sub area for purposes of this grant? Yes. How will Dr. Cobb select consultants that have placed a bid? Is there a specific criteria or depend on the selected project? You want to answer that? Sure. So the Dr. Cog has assembled based on all of the consultants that have expressed interest. We've uh, gone through and um, basically identified areas of strength and different types of projects that have been performed in the past. So we have sort of a back end uh, table of all of this information. So um, in consultation with the local governments that uh, have the selected uh, project. Then Dr. Cog and the local governments will identify the appropriate consultants that we think make the most sense for the type of project that it, um, that it is, right? And then we'll solicit a bid from those consultants um, and move forward. Local governments may already have a consultant in mind that they have worked with in the past on, a plan, on this type of plan or that they, they think could be a good fit. That's obviously uh, an option to include in the bid, but since we do have the three bid minimum, we'll We'll, uh, we'll need to just um, also make sure that we get additional bids as well. So the primary criteria is, are they a good fit for the type of project? So I'm seeing another question. Um, will we send out the presentation? Uh, yes, so the slides will be posted um, in PDF format and a recording of this uh, presentation will also be posted on the event. Uh, page on drcog.org for this particular event, so this webinar. Um, and then, yes, yeah, so you'll be able to access it there. Well, um, not seeing any other questions in the chat. Sounds good. And if um, you think of any questions later on, or you have any additional follow up you need, or if you have something specific you want to reach out on, whether that's um, does this type of plan qualify for this project for this program, um, please feel free to reach out to Emily and I. Our emails are here uh, on this last slide, which again will be posted on drcog.org uh, hopefully later today. Um, so please feel free to reach out to us. Um, we're always happy to help. All right. Thanks, everybody. Take care.